Good evening. Welcome to MLC TV News. Reaching you live from the city of local Jakogi State. I am Fatima Yakub. The headlines. President Muhammad Buhari vows to eliminate all forms of violent crimes across the country. World Girl Child Day. Kogi concerned citizenry urge parents to train their girl child the way they should go. And Akuka and Chairman Taraba Council of Chiefs join ancestors at 84. Now, the news in details. President Muhammad Buhari has restated his administration's resolve to eliminate all forms of violent crimes across Nigeria. He stressed that his administration will continue to do everything within ambit of law to stamp out heinous crimes, creating fears among citizenry. The president gave the assurance during the passing out parade of 260 cadets of 68 regular course of the Nigerian Defense Academy, NDA, on Saturday in Kaduna. Buhari said, as you are aware, our beloved nation Nigeria is facing many security challenges at this period. Buhari stated that these assets will be deployed to accelerate the fight against insecurity in all parts of the country. He also explained that in the international scheme of affairs, security has also assumed the priority in governance. He also assumed the priority in governance as public policy. Buhari also said his government will not be distracted from achieving the main trust upon which he was elected, which is addressing the issues of insecurity, corruption, and the economy. The president emphasized that for Nigeria to be peaceful, prosperous, and democratic to attract foreign investors, the citizens must be law-abiding, committed, and promoters of peaceful coexistence. To the graduating cadets, Buhari said, the world which you are entering is very different from that which confronted many of your predecessors. Vice President Yemi Osibanjo says Nigerians will fare better living together as one in spite of ethnic differences. Osibanjo spokesman Lao Luakande in a statement on Sunday in Abuja said the Vice President had an interactive session with top officials of Nigeria High Commission, UK, at the Abuja House residence of the High Commissioner in London. The Vice President said the federal government would strive to ensure fairness and balance. The Vice President said, if you look at all of them sitting here, they represent all the geopolitical zones. This is a Nigeria that will succeed anything else doesn't make sense. He said citizens at home and in diaspora should promote the message of one country. According to him, anybody who looks at how Nigeria operates will recognize that it is better off in this system. He further stated that everywhere in the world today, people are coming together to form stronger units. They are not breaking up. This is not the time to break up. He said smaller nations are looking for ways of how they can become stronger by aligning with other nations. Osibanjo said that Nigeria was at a point in time in its history where it had security and economic challenges. He said that such challenges could happen to any government, adding that Nigeria would overcome the problems. Nigeria High Commissioner to UK Ambassador Sarafa Isola, Deputy High Commissioner Ambassador Sani Suleiman, the Defense Advisor Brigadier General Buhari Bafa, among other members of the staff, attended the meeting. The Federal Road Safety Corps, FRSC, has alerted motorists traveling to and from the southwest through Kaba Omo Ekiti Federal Highway of a failed section of the road at Iyamwe Kogi State because public education officer. Mr. B.C. Kazim said this in a statement on Sunday in Abuja. Kazim said that the development had inhibited free flow of traffic at the affected portion of the road. In view of the foregoing, motorists, travelers, and the general public are hereby advised to use alternative route from Ekiti, which is Ikare, Aire, Kaba, Lokoja, and another alternative route from Lokoja is Kaba, Aire, Ikare, Akoko, Lokoja, Kaba, Egbe, Omura, Ogidi, Ikare, alternative route to or from Southwest. The Federal Ministry of Works and Housing is already activating appropriate action to ameliorate the situation. FRS solicits maximum cooperation of the motoring public on this development. The cause will also continue to update the public periodically on further developments. The police officers, wives association president, who is also the wife of the inspector general of police, Hajara Usman Baba, has begun the call on police women to build a robust relationship with their husbands and cultivate the habit of living a healthy life in a healthy environment. 
The president, who said the tour to all states came with empowerment plans for women, especially the widows, was joined by the state governor's first lady, Bashida Belu, to sensitize and to motivate women to be to their husbands a mother would be to her child. Governor Bello's wife appreciated the poor's good gesture during the event that took place in local Jakogi State. A reporter has more. Kogi State First Lady Rashida Bello has commended the effort of the President of Nigeria Police Officers' Wives Association, POWA, Hajara Usman Al-Kali Baba, for the empowerment package she rolled out for hundreds of police women, including widows whose husbands died in the course of service. She promised to continue to key into the POWA plans to make life more beautiful for the women. We are going to make sure we, we arrange more um, programs, advocacy programs, um, empowerment for the police. Uh, yeah. Rashida Bello expressed her benevolence by giving out cash donations to the women, numbering over 100 as part of supporting the POWA President's Empowerment Project. Also, I, I, I want to make emphasis on this again. Let's be our sister's keepers. I don't, one person wants to carry everything. It's not nice. I want us to get to the stage where this, you take one and take two and give to your neighbor. No one to pack everything. One person wants to check everything. We're always rushing. We're always fighting. We're always... It's, at the end of the day, if we are settled, everybody will be fine. Every, we have enough items to give to everybody. The power president, Hajara Usman Baba, took time to encourage women to be their husband's best friends and companions. These days, the, the, the man never cares about your beauty. The man never cares about your riches. The man cares the way you take him. The man wants you to nurture him as a child. The man wants you to make him feel like his mother. So women, you are the one sitting in the room in the barrack. Let's keep barrack clean. Please. It's one of the things that make your husband to go outside. She referenced the husband and wife relationship to be like that of mother and child. Cautioned them of living a hygienic life that called for the environment and ways to be clean at all times. You may be living in a three-bedroom flat. If you are kept, the environment is dirty. Your husband will see a girl that has only one room and that environment is clean. Not even a bed in that room. Maybe just a sea spring. Don't look. The man will prefer that place to the three bedroom you have. Am I lying? No. Most of us here, we don't take care of ourselves. Then you look at yourself and you say the man has gone astray. Since I came on board, I've been settling cases. My husband is in Port Harcourt, he's left for My husband is in uh, Anambra, he left us. My husband, by the time I look at the woman from head to toe, I tell myself the man ought to leave. You know why? If I was to be a man, I think I would marry four wives. Beneficiaries were full of gratitude. I thank God for today, and God will bless our mommy, the POWA president, the first lady of Kogi State. God will bless them, and they shall move higher, higher in Jesus' name. All the way from Abuja, he comes to us, widow. God, as you remember, widow. God Almighty will remember her and her family. God Almighty bless her and family. God bless mommy. As mommy clear our tears, God will clear mommy tears. Mommy had no go dry. By God's grace. I thank mommy. Mommy is so good for us. And she will live long life in Jesus' name. Thank you very much for our governor. May God bless her. May God increase her. May God make her husband to be present in the name of Jesus. It was also a moment for hard and efficient workers to be appreciated as popular Kogi or Noja Joy whose ways of controlling traffic had won her wide recognition, got a swaying machine as a reward for displaying humor along with her job always. Inshallah, is your time we are looking for. Try to make a difference. Let's make a difference. Let's make a difference in the life of the police family, not only the police family. She was standing under this song. That song is not all of us that can take it. She was waving with passion. 
She was moving with passion. I was, oh, she was coordinating. And I was impressed. And she said, what did you say you want, madam? Okay, she said she wants a swimming pool. So we are going to give her a swim machine now. She appreciated Poa and the State Force Lady for their recognitions. So I'm very happy for uh, the Poas and uh, my IG wife and others have uh, recognized me as a woman police, as a traffic controlling traffic on the highway. I'm very happy and I'm very grateful for what he has done for me today. It's only God Almighty that will reward she and the family member. She will not die and the husband will retire safely. The empowerment program forms part of the Power President nationwide tour. Grounding and sewing machines, gas cooking stoves, consumables and non-consumable items were given to them. The maiden visit of the Inspector General of Police Wife to Kogi State had top wives of the rank and files of the Nigerian Police Force joined with top government functionaries in the state. The International Girl Child Day is celebrated every October 11th worldwide to focus on the rights, safety and education of the girls. The core objective is to make the girl child an active part of the progress of the world. The theme of this year's celebration is that digital generation, our generation relevant stakeholders who spoke with our reporter, Faith Abdul Ghaffar, are experienced to train their girl child the way they should go. Kogi State has joined the rest of the world to mark the International Girls' Child Day. The State Security Advisor, Jerry Omodara, and the representative of the Ministry of Women Affairs and Social Development, Aminu Aljara, spoke on the significance of the day and the need to make the girls' child a priority. It is a very important day that we should look inward to know what the girls' child is all about. How we can get them to have a better society. Remember, they say when you train a girl, you train a woman, you are training a nation because it's going to be better for all, especially in Nigeria. Meaning that the whole world today stands still celebrating the girl child because every child and every gay child especially deserves to be celebrated. It is a... Uh, we are all familiar with the fact that uh, the girls are usually seen like those that should be by the side, even though the girl child also deserves equal treatment, access to education, they should be free of violence and all sorts. Hajara applauded the administration of Yaya Belu for ensuring girl child rights are not violated in the states why the state security advisor kick against the trafficking girl child and depriving them of social amenities. If you look at it, there are so many teams going on with this campaign on end violence against children and girl child. Even if you look at the posters around, it says end violence against children, especially the girl child. If you look at Kogi states, Let's take a look at Kogi, for example, since we are here in Kogi. You will hardly hear of how girls are being molested, being abused, like we hear from other states. The number of molestation or child, our girl child abuse in Kogi states is not as high as we hear from other states. And uh, the ministry has been doing its best with campaign, and uh, making sure that whoever is found abusing any girl child is being punished. Sexually, a lot of them are molested because you send them under each to go and sell, and a lot of things that happen in process of selling, and a, a, a process of not going to school. At school time, you see them selling on the road. Well, it has been better because I think the, 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 the girl themselves, a lot of uh, NGOs are coming up, the government is doing a lot, particularly like in Kogi State, a lot of focus is being put on the guests to know how well they can be better, to better our society. And I must confess that if we don't look into the guest trafficking, 
in Nigeria because it's not only trafficking outside Nigeria. Trafficking within the country is available. They are there, and particularly, you see a lot of them being used for one thing or the other, a lot of them being sent out of school, not a lot of them giving out to marriage, early marriage. So all these are areas in which the government at all levels, I'm talking from local government, state, and, and, the, and, the, and the federal, look into. We must begin to know that it is compulsory that a girl must go to school. An NGO founder, Avosohe Amadu, and other emphasized on the need for the government to look into the various challenges that are affecting girls' child in the society. Informal and formal education, very important. Then maybe whatever it is, social vices, social things, social activities around the girl child should be educated. I, I happen to be a one-time victim of human trafficking and a survivor by the grace of God today. Uh, uh, it, it wasn't a, a, a sweet experience. It was a very horrible experience. And I could say that happened based on the fact that I have an upbringing whereby my, uh, the parents I was born into, the home I was born into, doesn't believe in a girl child education. In this digital age, so lot of things, children learn a lot of things from the phone, via the phone and the internet and so on. So I think it's good for them to learn more in order to curb um, child abuse, to curb um, bad influence and, like I said, make your girl child your friend so that she can tell you whatever thing she has heard. Parents and guardians are admonished to pay proper attention to their children, most especially the girl's child. Every 11th of October is a day set aside to mark and celebrate girl child and the theme for the year 2021 is digital generation, our generation. The world must ensure that girls, especially in developing countries, can reap the benefits of technological revolution that has reshaped the life of every human being. Faith Abdul Gaffa reporting for MNC TV. Teachers are said to be the nation builders, formators of children's future, and to some extent, second parents are sad what Teachers Day to celebrate the struggles and joy of teacher. Teachers are also responsible to some extent what the society also got from trained students. In Abuja, reporters spoke to a few teachers and students who spoke about what should be expected. Lovet Ezechuku, a primary school teacher, expressed her happiness and emphasized the need for schools to have an effective power supply to ensure adequate teaching. What you need to do is just to ensure that government should try and provide light and again, progress with she also appealed to the government to review the teachers' welfare package. And when they are leaders, you see them earning higher salary than even the teachers that taught them. It's, it's, no, it's very annoying, seriously. It's very annoying. The, the government should make sure that you should put um, teachers as one of their priorities, not only, uh, what is it called, um, government, no, politicians, ministers, these people. They, they are not the only ones that are supposed to be, you know, paid very well. With Afalabi Jonathan, who doubles both as a school and a home lesson teacher, said teachers should always teach with passion and care, especially children with special needs. We could lay that foundation of care and love and be able to assimilate. If not, even if it is not at the rate of others, at least we will be able to gain something. Like in my class, there are kids that you find it very difficult to, to like make sure they, they listen to what teaching them. Like there are some of them that when you are teaching, they are not in love with them. So you have to like, you know, try to use methods, different methods, teaching methods to make sure they are in Students were not left out as they spoke about their teachers. The teacher is Miss uh, Rachel. Miss Rachel? Yes. Okay. So why do you like Miss Rachel? Because she taught well. 
anytime she entered the class, she'll, she'll make sure she tells us a story and how to behave and um, and we should um, like if we have a problem we can meet her and she can find the solution. Yes. You recall that the world celebrated teachers on the 5th of October with the theme teachers at the heart of education recovery. Government, parents, pupils, students and teachers have to work together to achieve much expected recovery in education sector. Uchechi from Beke in Isiala Mbano local government area, Imo State, Niger's best graduating cadet from Nigeria Defense Academy, Kaduna. Uchechi promised the chairful has marked the best cadet from Nigerian Defense Academy, Kaduna, with first class honors in computer science in the Faculty of Military Science and Interdisciplinary Studies. She also received academic awards as following Commander in Chief, best graduating cadet, academic award. Afe Babalola Best Behaved Graduating Cadet Award, Chief of Defense Staff, Best Graduating Cadet Award in Military Science and Interdisciplinary Studies, Commandant Best Graduating Cadet in Computer Science and Best Graduating Cadet in the Eve and Best Graduating Cadet in Navy. You still watching MLC TV, we'll be right back. Malakai TV online is here. For your timely and reliable news that reaches you fast with the breaking news, choose MLC TV. Welcome back. Now on foreign news. The Indian Army says five of its personnel have been shot dead by suspected militants in Indian administrated Camp Shmil. They were killed after fighting erupted during the search operation on Monday close to the line of control, which separates Indian and Pakistan controlled Kashmir. It is said to be the deadliest attack on army forces since February. Tensions have escalated amid a wave of civilian killings by suspected rebels. Officials in the Indian administered Kashmir said soldiers had surrounded a village in the district of Punj after reports that armed insurgents were hiding there. Army spokesman Lieutenant Colonel Devender Anand said an officer and four other soldiers were killed during the search operation, which is ongoing. The rise of homegrown militancy in Kashmir, Kashmir profile, it comes amid a series of civilian killings in the region by suspected militants. Last week, seven civilians were shot dead in six days. Politicians across the region have condemned the killings. More than 400 people have been taken in for questioning in the hope of putting a stop to the recent escalation. Officials says that since India revoked nearly all of Article 370 in the Constitution stripping Jammu and Kashmir of the autonomy, it had been guaranteed more local young people have been drawn towards what has been a long insurgency against Indian rule. 34 years, almost to the day since the shocking killing of Burkina Faso's then President Thomas Sankara, 14 men are going on trial accused of complicity in the murder of the man known as Africa's Che Guevara. The charismatic Pan-Africanist was shot dead, 837, by soldiers during a coup on 15th of October 1987, which saw his close friend, Blase Kampori, come to power. Four years previously, the pair had staked the takeover which saw Sankara become president. Now to Aliyu Nasser on sports today. Now Sport News. The Super Eagles of Nigeria made good their promise to bounce back from a shocking 1-0 defeat. They lost to Central African Republic by beating the Wild Beast 2-0 on Sunday in Douala, Cameroon. In a 2022 FIFA World Cup qualifying match, goals from Leon Balogu and Victor Osimhen ensured that the Eagles remain in pole position to win the group and qualify for the second round with only two games remaining. Similarly, in the UEFA Nations League final played on Sunday, France defeated Spain by two goals to one, while the third place encounter between Italy and Belgium ended two goals to one in favor of Italy, the European champion. That is all on Sport News. I'm Aliu Nasir, reporting for MLC TV. On entertainment, Matthias Ayodeji, over to you. Popular Nigerian singer Joseph Akifenwa Dokus 
popularly known as Joe Boy, as one Nigerians against pouring harmful content on their bodies. The 24-year-old singer's new song, Alcohol, released on the 24th of September, has been trending on TikTok and other social media networks since its release. This led to a viral challenge where fans were seen pouring harmful content like bleach on their bodies, with some even going to the extent of drinking the tour. Joe Boy always seems displaced with the videos urge his fans to desist from the challenge. He however thanked them for their unwavering support for his songs. On his Twitter page he wrote, I appreciate the love alcohol is getting, but stop pouring stuffs on your bodies. You are welcome to keep learning the lyrics by the way. Joe Boy who won the Edits Award for the Song of the Year and Best Pop in Single 2020 was discovered by Mr. Easy of the record label Empower Africa in 2017. Matthias Ayodeji Peter reporting for MLC TV. Back to our caster for more stories. Thank you, Aliu and Matthias, for the update on sports and entertainment. The paramount and supreme ruler of the Juku race and chairman Taraba State Council of Traditional Rulers, His Majesty Shekarao Agil Masaibi Kuivo II, has joined his ancestors. Statement by Jolly Abu Masa. Statement by Jolly Abu Masa Ibi, SA Media to Akuka, explained that. The paramount ruler joined his ancestors at the age of 84 after leading the Warara Faris for 45 years. All traditional rites in accordance with the Jukun traditions have since commenced. The final traditional rites for Akuka's transition from the palace to Puji will be announced in due course. Meanwhile, Kogi State Governor Yahya Belu has conveyed a condolence message to Governor and the people of Taraba State. In a press statement signed by his Chief Press Secretary, Mohamed Onogu, where he described the death of the late king as a loss to the nation. While condoling with the people and the government of Taraba State over the demise of the highly referred royal father, he noted that he would be greatly missed for his fatherly roles in the state, the northeast geopolitical zone, and the nation. Similarly, Taraba State Governor, architect Darius Dixon Ishiaku, has expressed shock and sadness on the passing of His Royal Majesty, Dr. Shikara Oagi Masaibe Akuka of Ukari, and chairman of the Taraba State Council of Chiefs. Governor Ishiaku described the late Akuka as a foremost paramount ruler whose reign brought peace, unity, and prosperity to Ukari, Taraba State, and the entire ancient Kurarafa Kingdom. He described his reign as a period of self-discovery by the Jukum people of their strategic place in history and role in promotion of modern civilization in Nigeria and beyond. He said the demise of the traditional ruler at this point in time has robbed Taraba State and Nigeria of the benefit of his wise counsel, which he offered very generously in his personal capacity and as chairman of the Taraba State Council of Chiefs. He prayed God for the repose of his soul, for a sponsorship and advert placement called the numbers displayed on your screen. Please do like and subscribe to our social media handles. Our Facebook page is MLC TV, Instagram MLC TV 2021 and YouTube channel Melkite TV. I am Fatima Yakub. Thanks for staying with us.